Hello and welcome back to the channel. Before we get into the video, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to all of my channel members whose names are appearing on screen right now. If you want to become a channel member, you can do so by clicking the link in the description and there are two tiers. Uh, the first name is Shout Out Supporter, which means that in the beginning of every reaction, you will get your name appear on screen. And the second tier is the weekly catch ups, where I either go live or I do a video, usually, which is like a get ready with me, some live updates. And it's just, and it's just a bit more of an intimate chat setting. Now, obviously, you don't have to become a member. You're you watching the video, liking it, commenting, sharing it. All of that is greatly appreciated. And also, if you want, you can leave a super thanks. That would also be greatly appreciated. So, now that that is out of the way, let's get into the video. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ilona. I'm also known as Shakar Transformations. I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder. And this is particularly relevant today because we're going to be looking at some glitter and lasers. Um, the woman that lost weight due to fat loss injections um, and that has been promoting a very poorly put together AI driven workout based program um and claims i've lost weight that way but you know lifestyle changes but it's fat loss injections really she's gonna tell us that you don't need a home gym and that you can just make amazing progress at home because the amazing progress she made is through her those intense co-pilot workouts yes yes not the fat loss injections no no the co the co-pilot workouts um so to start off the reality is, is that you can only achieve so much at home. It's a good way to get started, absolutely. If you're nervous, if you want to get started, if you're a bit nervous about entering in the gym, if you want to build a bit of a foundation and base, yes, there's only so much you can do with a pair of dumbbells um, and some resistance band. Uh, I program for some people. I do coach people from home. Uh, some of the clients that I have are one-to-one. -one. Some of them have pretty nice setups with like cable machines, squat racks and stuff like that. Look, if you have a squat rack and a cable machine, and you have plates and dumbbells, then you, ba you basically have everything you need to pretty much have a good workout. But with when you're just talking about a couple of kettlebells, some resistance bands and a couple of dumbbells, it becomes um, interesting for me in terms of programming to keep it interesting. And at some point you do need to either invest in heavier dumbbells and, and kettlebells, I was just wondering what my cat was doing. Uh, you have to invest in heavier dumbbells and kettlebells and then still Realistically, in terms of like leg growth and back growth, uh, you do want to eventually work up to like barbells really in order to move more weight. Um, so yeah, having a rack, a, a power rack or a squat rack and a bench and stuff like that, it's kind of crucial. But let's see what Anna has to say because obviously she is, she is the ultimate fitness inspiration. She knows what she's talking about because she has been doing co-pilot workouts with somebody, somebody messaged me on my uh, Instagram. I don't remember who you are. But thank you for letting me know. Apparently, it's completely AI driven. Like you, you don't actually talk to a person. It's completely AI. So nothing really is that bespoke or tailored around you. And we know that because, well, her, her form is so awful. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, let's see what she has to say. And I'll obviously give my thoughts because that's why we're here, right? And also, by the way, happy Valentine's Day. I'm actually going on a Valentine's Day training date. Not with a man. I've got this uh, with a girl. And it's not a romantic date either. It's um, a girl that I compete with, funnily enough. At the last Balkan Grand Prix, she's Bulgarian. And um, she has, we end up following each other. And I saw her train. And I'm like, you're, freaking, you're pretty strong. We should train together. She's like, yeah, we should. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. We agreed today. Didn't realize it was Valentine's Day. But yeah, um, not that it matters. Because whilst I'm not single anymore, uh, my guy lives very far away. So we're not going to see each other today. So... Which is fine, because I don't really care about Valentine's Day anyway, stuff like that. It's not really a, it's like a very Americanized holiday. It's kind of coming to other parts of the world, but like the hype around it is not so, like I've never really cared about Valentine's Day. It's like, it's neither here nor there for me. But yeah, it'll be nice to go and train, train with somebody, make a change of scenery. So this is why we're filming in the morning and let's get into it. How to get started working out and how to even go to a gym for the first time. And I'm going to tell you a little secret. You never have to set foot in a gym if you don't want to. In fact, there's tons of great tools you can use at home. Well, you know, you don't have to, but the reality is, is that if you want to really achieve a true body transformation, 
if you want to really achieve, I mean, like, first of all, if you want to lose fat, you just need to eat it. That's what it is. You mean he's made. Violet, do you mind? Hey, if you want to lose fat, it's just about um, obviously eating this. Uh, losing. But if you're looking to really build muscle, if you're looking to really make a serious change in terms of recomposition, you do you really do need a gym, or you need to have really good, a very a fair a pretty decent selection of equipment at home. Home to create an exercise routine that's not only going to challenge you but help you build muscle over time right in your house. So today I thought it'd be really cool to take you guys through what I use personally in my kind of like makeshift home gym to help me build my strength, my endurance, and my muscles. So hopefully you can find some things that might help you build a space at home that feels welcoming and helps. You it's it's interesting that uh, that she's putting out a video like this when really the, all the weight she's lost is just purely from the injections. You progress to a healthier lifestyle. Let's get into it. Let's start with the biggest and arguably one of my best home gym fitness purchases. This is a Flybird workout bench. You I agree. A bench is probably necessary, and you want to have one that definitely doesn't incline as well. So yeah, that's a definitely. I would agree. A uh, bench is necessary. You might be asking why this bench. Well, I did a lot of research because I am in a bigger body, and frankly, I am terrified that a bench is going to collapse under me and that I'm going to get injured. So what I loved about this bench is that it supports up to 800 pounds, which means not only will it support my weight, but will also support me using my weight in exercises. You know that extra weight. <laughs> what those extra like 10 to 15 pound dumbbells you're using. Let's not pretend you like bench pressing like another 400 pounds of double weights. That comes with force. And I'm bouncing. <laughs> this is so hard. But you get the point. You get the point. Now, I also like it because it's really adjustable. You can put it in a variety of different settings based on your workout. So if you need back support when you're sitting or if you need to lay down, both options are available. You can also work out in an incline as you challenge yourself further in your workout. Also, and this is probably my favorite thing about it, it folds up and you can hide it in a closet or a corner of your house. So it doesn't take up a lot of space. Unlike some other benches that support heavier weights, this bench actually can be folded down and put away. In living in an apartment, I don't have a ton of extra space. I don't have a permanent home gym. So this bench works perfect for me. I keep it in my corner. I keep it folded up. And when I need it, it's there and easy to put back together. So for me, it really was a winner. Now, the other purchase that was frankly pretty much an investment, I'm not going to lie about it, but I have no regrets over and absolutely love are these adjustable weights. These are from Nordic Track and these. Yeah, I've never used adjustable weights, so I don't know how they work, but I have heard about them. A lot of people do use them. So I'm curious to see how they work. Uh, yeah, ge I'm actually genuinely curious to see how they work because I've never used any of them. These are my babies, my children, my workout compadres. I love them. Why are these so amazing? Let me fill you in. These weights are so amazing because they adjust from all the way up from 10 pounds to 55 pounds. Uh -huh. which that is actually pretty helpful. And the fact that you can adjust them so easily by just moving things around, that actually does look pretty good. And I would say that's a fair recommendation. I've never used them, uh, but yes, they look very useful. Which means any like weight I need in that range, I've got it. And they adjust quickly and easily and if I'm switching weights within a workout, I have what I need when I need it. If you buy dumbbells individually, it can get really expensive. Actually, probably more expensive than the adjustable dumbbells. Additionally, yeah, it probably would be to be fair. Um, and if they and they take up a lot of space as well, obviously. They take up more space. Yeah. They can be cumbersome. You need a storage area for them. Whereas these I just hide behind my couch and nobody knows they're there. Additionally, I really, really like them because they allow me to grow and progress. I purposely bought the 10 pounds to 55 pounds, knowing that I don't lift 55 pounds now, but I might in the future. So these are future proof for me. They're going to allow me to grow and become strong. At the 10 pounds to 55 pounds, knowing that I don't lift 55 pounds now. It's a little bit better to form in these, but this is why when you're really anybody, if you Training, you do benefit from working with a personal trainer to start off with and like and a lot of personal trainers are shit as well I'll be honest I I'm a technically qualified personal trainer um, I never paid for the personal trainer qualification like in, in the UK you need to like register to like because like to be on the registration I did the course I qualified and, and then COVID happened and I moved to I was gonna say to Portugal I moved to to uh, Br Brazil <laughs> Jesus Christ to Bulgaria so, but at the end of the day, I see personal trainers here, and I've seen personal trainers in other gyms, and even in my personal trainer course, people don't know what they're doing. Um, so find, if you're new to training, the best of it is find, find a coach or a trainer that you feel like when you see them working with clients, they pay attention to their clients, they're, they're correcting their form, and they're not getting them to do like all of this crazy wild stuff, like the trainers over here, I just see them do stuff, and I'm like, why? And a year later, the people still look the same, they haven't progressed, and I'm just like, you see me, like, especially with women that are trying to grow their lower body, it's like, they get them to do all of this really w weird shit, 
And then I'm like, you look, at, you see, you see me every day. We see each other every morning. You see how I train. You see how they train. You see what my legs look like. You see what your coach is doing. You see what what I'm doing. I'm not saying come with me because I don't do in person coaching. It's not my thing at all. I don't like it. Like I like to train with people sometimes. I don't like to do it in person, one to one coaching. People, most people don't want to train at my intensity. They don't want to train the way that I like to train. So this is why I don't train often with people. But besides that point. Find somebody to work with you so you don't make mistakes because I did that too. The first two years of my training, I didn't train properly. I made mistakes. I had to readjust my squat form many times. I had to readjust many things many times. So find a good trainer, get those newbie gains, and learn the correct form because this is now. Really but I might in the future. So these are future proof for me. They're gonna like this is like I'll need to grow and become she's like stronger and support me with that. She's not even like fully extending. It's like I like what she do growth. I will say if you're not interested in building uh, that level of muscle, there is. Please. Do you know how hard it is to build muscle as a fucking woman, as a natural woman, especially over the age of 30, even if you if you're menopausal, it's even harder. Building muscle is hard. It doesn't just happen overnight. I can promise you my cat is I can promise you you can lift really heavy weights and you will not look like me. You, I look like me because of, uh, first of all, decade of training, uh, ge genetics and performance enhancers. I'm purposely to grow, I purposely try to grow muscle. This, this, um, you should follow some of the power lifting the pages and some of the hook, hook grip is a good one. Hook grip is a very good one on Instagram, which is basically, it does like all the Olympic lifts. Watch all these tiny, for like 100 pounds, 80 pounds, uh, like 110 pound women like yank, yank up enormous amounts of weight and they're just normal normal women they don't like a lot of them don't even look overly muscular they're just like toned what people would say it's like you can be a woman and lift really fucking heavy weights and not be big and muscular this conception that you have to be big and muscular in order to lift heavy weight that lifting heavy weight is going to make you big and muscular it can happen but a lot more comes into it and especially as a woman you need to eat a lot of food. There has to be the genetics aspect of it and performance enhancers. You're not just gonna eat, like you're not just gonna get big and muscular. If it was that easy, I would be I would literally be She-Hulk by now. I would be Natalia Amazonka. I would be that fucking big if it was down to that. And it's not. Like Natalia Amazonka is Natalia Amazonka because she takes a lot of testosterone and training and everything else. She takes there's more, there's all of the performance enhancers, plus plus hard work, etc. etc. This whole misconception of lifting heavy is like, lifting heavy is going to make me big and bulky. It doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. Like, if it was, I mean, I'm just going to have to fucking show you in. So, for example, 49 kilos. Snatching 90 kilos. Okay. Let's see. 49 kilos is like 100, 110 pounds or something like that. I mean, I do love these pages though. Here. She, all right, all right, she is pretty buff, though, to be fair. 71 kilos, so she, she is a bit heavier. 140 kilos. 45 kilos. That's, like, under 100 pounds. 100 kilo. Like, I can't, I can't lift this. I struggle back squatting 100 kilos sometimes. And, like, deadlifting 100 kilos, let alone cleaning that. That's clean and jerking it. That's insane. Like, do you understand how you do? Like, unless you lift weights, you do not understand how fucking strong this is. How powerful. Here we go. Here we've got another one. Uh, 71 kilos and 110 kilos. Does she look crazy jacked? I mean, like, she is a bit muscular through the arms, to be fair. But is she, like, insane? Does she, does she look like the She-Hulk? No. Here we go. 49 kilos. Oh my god, so big and buff. 112 kilos clean and jerk. Like, I don't understand. I, th I don't think that's like uh, 247 pounds. I don't think people understand how much fucking weight this is. So lifting heavy weights does not make you big and bulky. So please just stop with the stupid rhetoric. This is like diet culture, but for weightlifting. It's just dumb and it doesn't make sense. Is it cheaper variation that's available? Sorry, it just really bothers me because it's just really hard to... For a woman to build, build muscle is really fucking hard. You don't just build muscle by picking up a heavy weight. Like, it's just... I don't understand why people are still per 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 perpetuating this rhetoric. Because it's just stupid.
basically. Available, which I believe goes five to 25 pounds and it is considerably less money. And that's, that's really because they're not as heavy, <laughs> right? So you're paying for that extra weight and the design of it being stronger to be able to support that extra weight. But overall, these have been really my partners in crime in getting my workout together and I have zero regrets about purchasing them. They've been fantastic. Oh, I've been using them for God, the form is just so awful. over four months and I've had absolutely no issues. So couldn't recommend them more. I mean, they do seem, seem great. That's I'll give them, but the form. This strap is probably the oldest thing in my home gym and honestly cannot live without it, especially if you're in a larger body, a good strap for stretching is really important. What I love about this strap in particular is that it has all of these little areas you can grab on. So if you're in a stretch and you're working towards deepening that stretch, you can use these loops to help you pull yourself forward to allow you to deepen that stretch safely, but also use the strap to like help you get there. Sometimes our bodies frankly can be a little bit in the way and this helps counteract that by allowing I mean, to be fair, that seems fair enough, that recommendation. I've never used one, but yeah, it makes sense if you're trying to improve on flexibility. I want you to maintain that pressure. Also, I use this when I'm doing leg lifts, when I'm doing um, any types of stretches that require me to lift my leg in the air. It just allows me to get a better positioning of the leg and just, again, be more supported in that exercise. I think that if you are just starting working out and you wanna work out safely and build your flexibility, I could not recommend this more. It is my favorite thing. I've literally had it for around 10 years. It's still in great shape, so it will work forever. And even if you're not exercising and you just wanna get a better stretch, this is your girl. This mat is new for me. I actually was gifted it from PopFlex. I didn't know if I was gonna love it, but turns out I really needed it because this is how I protect my knees. Now, using a mat, you can use it for yoga. Sometimes I even prefer to do like my planks and stuff on the floor because I feel like my shoes get a bit. Yeah, it makes sense to have yoga mats, especially if you were training from home just for stretching, not to be on the floor. It is more comfortable. Better grip. But what I use this mat for is a lot of the exercises when I'm on my knees. And what I do is I act now, actually what she did here was not bad. Because what she's doing here, or tried to do, is she's doing a push-up, but what she's doing is she's going from the knees, which is good, and she's focusing on the lowering phase. So if you're trying to progress in an exercise and you're not strong enough, something like, especially body weight stuff, focus on the lowering phases. Um, like, focus on strengthening yourself through the resistance, and then reset yourself, and then go again. So my knees. Actually and what I terrible, do is I actually go... Like, it's not a terrible way of doing a push-up, to progress into doing push-ups. So that was good it over so instead of having a mat like this i will have the mat like this for extra cushion sometimes if i'm really sore i'll give myself four i don't know what she's doing what stretch this is four folds of the mat so i get as much cushion as i can underneath my knee to prevent any pain um i've been doing a lot of work on my knee joints in particular so i've had yeah i'm not fucking surprised with all the running and the weird fucking squat jumping you're doing you do have to do a lot of work on your knees because i'm sure they're in agony a lot of the time i mean at the best of times you care a lot of fat around your knee joints and in the lower body, but with the squat jobs and the running, I'm sure that the knees are aching a lot. Yes, yes. I had less pain recently, but I still have flare ups. And this is the only way some days that I can do activities on my knees and sometimes even my shins because they can be a little, little bit sore, especially if I'm inflamed. So getting a good solid mat. By the way, her shoe is uh, absolutely not recommended. Do not wear training shoes like this ever. If you're weight training, this is not the kind of shoe you should wear. You should have completely flat soles. Uh, unless you're squatting and you have a squat shoe people ask me sometimes especially when i'm deadlifting i like to deadlift um in socks for the simple reason that like i literally grip the floor with my toes so flat sh flat soles is essential very flat is really important in just protecting those joints and protecting your knees when doing floor work this is my newest baby i'm obsessed with her um this is a trx and this is the travel version of the yeah i would be careful with trx i don't know what like their weight capacity is just make sure you like attach it properly there was a lot of people injuring themselves during the COVID days with trx and resistance bands and stuff like that can be very can be very useful but doing things on the body weight uh you're just gonna make sure like you've got the strength and that it's attached properly and that you have the correct form because like you know especially when you are in the larger body the last thing you want to do is like fall on your face like if you're doing like some sort of like push-up type maneuver um and then if it breaks and you fall you know 50 pounds of falling or like 500 pounds of falling it's not quite the same isn't it so the trx now i got this because i started using the trx as part of my physical therapy and i loved what it did in terms of helping me build power and overall oh, this, yes yes she should not be doing this at all and like i don't know why she's doing this uh, i think the like probably the dumbest thing that anybody can do when you're morbidly obese is Fucking squat jumps, but there you go. Physical endurance. And I wanted to be able to continue doing those exercises at home. And honestly, TRX overall is a great way to push your flexibility and your mobility while also protecting your joints when you're a heavier person. It allows you to put some of the- How, how, is, it, how is it protecting your joints when you're jumping up and down? Sorry, I forgot to get my camera right. How, how is it protecting your joints when you're 
jumping up and down. Okay. The weight of your body into your arms, which then reduces the friction and the tension in your legs, which basically just protects your legs. So when I'm practicing things like jump I don't know about that. Maybe. I don't know about that. Jump squats and stuff like that, where I want to get the mobility of the movement to warm up my joints, but don't necessarily want to put as much pressure on. The TRX is your like ultimate friend. You can use it anywhere at home. This goes right over the door and that creates the tension point and your door frame will support you. Trust me, I did not believe it myself, but it does work. And then you can adjust it to whatever height you need. The one I have comes in a little bag so I can actually take it with me when I travel. Since running is really important to me right now and I have some really big goals, I am probably going to travel with my TRX. What that allows me to do is have almost like a complete home gym with me in my suitcase. So this will allow me to do body weight exercises and all kinds of things from beginner to all the way advanced level life fitness training with just one item. Yeah, I suppose. Well, yeah, it will allow you, allow you to do some calisthenic stuff, but like at what capacity you're going to be able to do, perform that properly where you're over a certain weight, I don't know. Like calisthenics, usually speaking, people who do calisthenics are kind of like ripped, in, a, in the actual terminology of the word ripped. They have very low body fat. I would say the TRX is one of the... In their whole body. Just joking the most underrated fitness items out there in fact i wish more gyms had this than had like machines because being able to move under your own body weight is honestly one of the yeah okay like gyms should have no gyms should have machines to having a, a couple of trx uh, cable things whatever you want to call it uh, attachments yes okay but no weight is more important and less dangerous the most like empowering forms of exercises there is and honestly i would say i've increased my mobility significantly when I guess you never deadlifted if you've ever deadlifted. You know what? Deadlift squats, that sort of stuff, that's the most empowering exercises. Um, TRX is not so much. So I started using this in my training, especially my power. I feel like I'm able to like jump higher and push harder since I started incorporating TRX. Also, if this feels overwhelming and you're well, like, how actually, there, her squat form was very good because of the TRX, because the TRX is allowing her to sit back, be more upright, and have a better form. So, yes, for that, for this reason, using this in my training ability significantly my power i feel like so I'm actually the form here for her squat yeah like i said is very good able to like jump higher and push so i mean better is better is better let's 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 stick with that but this is because she's having the count she's able to counterbalance so if you're learning how to squat then using a trx is probably a good starting point yes harder since i started incorporating trx necessarily knowing how to use it a there's a lot of tutorials online Focused on making workouts more enjoyable and recovery more enjoyable. So I'm going to show you something that's a little bit gross, but it's important. If you've seen any of my short form content with me running, you will have seen these. These are my Bose wireless headphones. Let me tell you something. These are, I believe, around 10 years old. When I got them, they were state of the art technology. It was like a big deal to have wireless headphones and they were a big purchase for me. I have only replaced just these ear pieces, which I do regularly just for hygiene. You can see the top is literally crumbling. It's disgusting, but they are still good. They are still as good as the day I bought them. These phenomenally hold up through literally I mean, I do agree. Having your own music, whatever it is you're listening to in the gym makes a difference. I can't do normal gym music. I don't understand why gyms have music that isn't like a beat and aggressive. It doesn't have to be like metal, but it needs to have a fast beat. It needs to have some aggression. It needs to be something that gets you going when it's just like fucking elevator music. Who, who wants to hear that? Like, I don't want to hear that. I want something that makes me angry, that gets me going. Well, I, I need my I definitely need my music so I always have like spare headphones in the car just in case I forget mine thing I've ever done and I probably will never buy another brand of headphones if these for some reason break which I honestly am beginning to believe they're indestructible because 10 years and they still look so good um and these, honestly these replacements are like 10 bucks I'll link them in case you have them in your I need water to recover and feel better and <laughs> I need water <laughs> yeah I've said it myself because I wouldn't have thought that way I could not recommend these more I will not buy another headphone because 10 years I have another item of PopFlex in here, and this yes was... Yeah, I mean, you can have these. This is, I find these bottles kind of get rank. The water gets rank. I just, I just prefer to refill my bottles, these ones. Because I feel, I feel like big ones are just, yeah, I don't know. They're just a bit of a nightmare to clean out. I mean, I, re I refill these, and then I kind of like, I get a six pack, and then I refill this one until I've gone through the six pack. And then I get a new bottle because like the, pla you're not supposed to reuse these too many, too much either because it's plastic. But, you know, I use it for like a few days, normally speaking. I should probably get a glass bottle, but again, like I find it really difficult to clean. So I'll just use stick with the plastic. It was gifted to me as well. And I probably never would have bought it myself because I wouldn't have thought that way. I don't love water. I really don't. <laughs> I hate water. Yeah, I've said it. But I need water to recover and feel better. And it's just really important as part of my training to get enough water. 
And why I like this water bottle specifically, and I'm gonna show you, is that this center part comes out and you can fill it with fruit. And you can fill it with just anything that you want to diffuse the scent into. So like mint, cucumber. I'm probably gonna put some apples in here later when I do the workout portion of this video. But you can add flavor to your water using natural things. Yeah, but you could also just use like the, the flavor drops or something like that. You get a lot of the calorie free, like drop things that have flavor in them. That works. But yeah, mint, mint and lemon is stuff like that. Nice too. It obviously, it's better. It's like a lot less artificial. And it allows you to make water just a little bit more enjoyable. And if you hate water, it's a way to trick yourself into drinking water. Plus, it's one of those Mac Daddies that basically is like, you drink this whole thing in a day and you're good. So usually I'll have this filled, I'll have some kind of fruit diffusing in it, and I will try to drink this behemoth in a day. And um, yeah, some days I do it, some days I don't, but it's nice to kind of also have like little goals. So like on this, it says like 7 a.m., let's get started. Great pace. It's incredible job. It's very positive. I like that this bottle does not shame you. But if you get to like 3 p.m. and you're still on 7 a.m.'s water, maybe it's time to have a little drink. I just think it's motivational and it helps me consume more water. Yeah, like I, stuff like this. I guess if it helps you, it helps you. I just don't see the point of it. If you need, to, if you, you just need to drink water. If you're training, it's like everything else. If you're trying to lose weight, you need to drink water, and not just a liter. You need to drink at least four to five liters of water a day, especially if you're exercising, maybe a bit more. You need to eat salt. There's this things that you need to do. Uh, I just don't understand why. If this helps you stay on track, I understand. But like the motivational things, why do you need to be motivated to drink water? Drink water because you need it, not because you're mo because of motivation. You drink water because your body needs it to recover, to digest, to function properly, to not be tired, etc., etc., etc. It also has this nice plastic layer here at the bottom. Well, not plastic, silicone. The silicone layer at the bottom that just protects it. So like when you have it on rugs and stuff like that, it's not going to poke through the plastic or scratch. It's going to endure. I also like the strap. I feel like I carry it like this, which makes me feel incredibly strong because it's a heavy ass bottle when it's full. But yeah, um, you don't have to get this brand. There are other brands that make this. I just personally like this one because it has the um, fruit infuser in it and not all of them do. A lot of them are just this bottle. This is the last thing we're going to talk about. And this was gifted to me by Massage Gun, I guess. They are actually quite helpful, to be fair. Jonathan, a true supporter of my campaign to be more physically fit. And this is a massage gun. Lady they do. They do really help. Like, I, I wish I had one for my... F I, I was gifted one at one point. I guess I lost that in the divorce. But anyway, besides that point, not that it matters. But yeah, they are really good. I should probably invest in one. Like, especially like on my glutes and my quads and my calves and stuff. In, around my hip joints and massage gun, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a game changer. I have already lost this piece. I do not know where it is. Um, so shout out to me for already losing that one cover. This one has an app down below, so you can check that out. But this is, get yourself a massage gun. So that. So I skipped through part of the massage gun. They are they are good. They are good. I have used them before. Uh, I actually did a sponsorship for a massage gun before because I do believe in massage guns. I have used them. I've had just used them on me. They are very good. So I would also recommend as a massage gun. They're just a bit pricey. Pretty much everything can be a bit noisy, but I guess it depends on how cheap they are. In my home gym, I don't have a ton of things, but the things I have really work for me. Um, they can be expensive. They can be an investment. So I would suggest to start with one, maybe two things that you really need or really feel will benefit you. If I had to make a suggestion of what to start with, I would start dumbbells on the bench. Start with the adjustable weights or the TRX because using those, you can pretty much get a full body workout in, and you can usually sub a bench for like a chair in most cases, but. It's always easier. Not, not really if you're like 500 pounds. I wouldn't, oh, I wouldn't be careful with that. The bench. There's always more like opportunities with the bench. But yeah, start small and build something you love. And that's what I've done here. And guess what? I work out three times a week for at least an hour. And I never set foot in the gym. Not according to the co-pilot work I actually showed. It was 30 minutes. And I've gotten the same results as people who do. So. No, no, no. You haven't. You had fat loss injections. That's okay. It's been worth it. Also. I think it costs about the same. I think everything all together that I've purchased is about the same price as a year-long gym membership. So that's something to keep in mind too. With that, guys, I hope you have an amazing rest of the week. Everything is linked down below. I'll check you later and peace. <laughs> all in all, the recommendations she made are not bad. They're not bad. It's just, obviously, we all know that she lost weight because of fat loss injections and not because of her three times a week, 30 minute work um, done with poor form. That's not, that's, that's not how it works. But yes, no, the recommendations to get started, yes, great. To get started, yes. Do you want long-term success? Do you really want to build, like, and I'm not saying become a bodybuilder, but I mean, like, if you're really looking to really transform your body, this is a, good, is a good way to get started, but eventually you need more heavier, you need cables, you need a bit of variety, a barbell. You need to be able to lift heavier. And don't worry, like I've showed you already, you can be a woman, Weigh little and be petite and or big. It doesn't matter what size you are. You can lift heavy.
and you will not turn into a She-Hulk. Uh, it's very hard to become a She-Hulk because She-Hulks take testosterone. So I don't take testosterone. I do take other performance analysis, not right now, but I do take performance analysis and this is why I have cap shoulders. If I was to take even stronger performance enhancers, I would be even more masculine. <laughs> On that note, I'm going to go, guys, because I need to get my pre-workout ready. I'm going to train glutes. Uh, no, legs, legs. I'm going to train legs because I'm going to Garage Park. So we're going to be doing pendulum. We're going to do the Nautilus glute drive. We're going to be doing the reverse, the reverse glute kick-up thing. Hamstring curls, walking lunges. It's going to be a good old brutal leg day. And I'm training with a girl that's strong as well. So we'll be able to spot each other, train beyond failure. And it will be complete and utter leg destruction. And I cannot fucking wait. I cannot wait. So I'm going to make my food to make sure that I'm fueled properly. And basically get going. So thank you so much. Comment, like, subscribe. Dislike the video if you disliked it. Insert all the hearts because it is Valentine's Day. And yeah, have an enjoy your Valentine's Day. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.